Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have finished all, doing almost all the problems from this book. If there is any problem at all that you encounter that gives you trouble, and if you wish to watch the solution to it, you will find the solutions to almost all the math problems from this book from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book, the second edition, happens to contain almost exactly the same problems, and in most cases appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find all the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Day number 1 through 250, the original solutions tend to be a little bit more in-depth, they tend to be a little bit lengthy. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison question. Quantitative comparison questions, as you know, are a very important part of the exam. They are a big chunk of the exam. They have not gone away. Unfortunately for us, the newer books do not provide us enough practice problem for quantitative comparison. For that reason, from day number 401, we began solving quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Right now, we are on page number 361. Please turn to it. Page number 361 which happens to be the very last test in the book here, the book that I just showed you, the 10th edition of the general GRE, contains seven exams. Today we are starting the problems from the very last exam, the seventh exam, and that will go from day number 461 through 470. Let's turn to it. Enough, enough talk. Question number one. Question number one, being question one, is very simple, very straightforward. Question number one, in fact, when it was given, 80% of people got it right. Here's what we're being asked to compare. We're being asked to compare 0.8 versus a half plus a third. Half plus a third. Well, what can we do? Well, we know half, we know half is just 0.5. And 0.3 we know is 0.33. As you can see already, 0.5 and 0.33 is going to be 0.83 and 0.83 of course is more than 0.8. Answer is B. Answer is B. Let's do the next one. Problem number two. Problem number two. The percentile for problem number two is 82 percent. We are told that Pat is older than Lee and we are told Pat is older than Lee and we are told that Lee is younger than Maria and what we're being asked to compare what we're being asked to compare are the ages of Maria and the and ages of Maria and Pat column A says Maria's age, M stands for Maria's age, P stands for Pat's age. I forgot to uh, remind you in the first problem to pause the video and do the problem yourself. Uh, I, I remember it now. You must always pause the video, even if I don't remind you, you must always pause the video instinctively, do the problem yourself, and then compare your work against the work that you and I do together. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video, see what you can do here. Well, the easiest, the quickest, the more efficient, most efficient method here would be simply to plug in numbers. Just plug in numbers and see what happens. We are told that Pad is older than Lee. I'm going to pretend that Pad is 10 year old. If Pad, Pad is 10 year old, we are told that Pad is older than Lee. Let's pretend that Lee is 8 year old. They go on to say that Lee is younger. Lee is 8, so 8 goes here. Lee is younger than Maria. So let's pretend Maria is 9. And if that's the case, then Maria being 9 and Pad being 10, in this case, the answer would be B. Now, the question we have to ask ourselves is, is that the only possibilities? 
Is that the only possibility? The fact that Lee is younger than Maria and Maria is nine year old, is that the only possibility or there might be some other situations, some other complications here? Because remember, whatever answer we pick here, if we pick A for the answer choice, what we're claiming is that quantity in column A is always greater. If we pick B for the answer choice, for example here, we pick B here, B means the quantity in column B is always, always, always greater. And when we pick C for the answer choice, C means the claim that we are making is that the two quantities are always equal. For that here, that in fact is not the case here. For example, Maria here is 9, but all we know is that Lee is younger than Maria. Maria might be 9, or Maria for all we know might be 900 year old. In which case, we can, if Maria happens to be 900 years old, now the answer would be A. Maria is still, Lee, Lee is still younger than Maria, and Pat is still older than Lee. So we do not know what Maria's age is. All we know is that whatever Lee's age is, here we plug in 8 for that, so we know that Maria cannot be 8. Maria has to be more than 8. Maria could be 80 or 8. Maria could be 8,000. We do not know. The answer is D. The answer is D. Question number 3. Question number 3. In question number 3, is a word problem and the percentile is 78%. We are told that two plots, two plots of land with equal area, we have two plots of lands, we have two plots of land with equal areas. We are told that first, first plot is, we are told that the first, the first plot is divided First plot is divided into 16 parcels with n acres each. The first plot is divided into 16 parcels with n acres each. They go on to tell us that the second plot, second plot is divided into, second plot is divided into 20 parcels with m acres each. And here is our here are the quantities that we have to compare. In column A, we have N, and in column B, we have M. Again, I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself, okay? Here's what's going on. The key thing here. The key thing here to understand is that these two plots that we're dealing with, these two plots that we're dealing with, two plots of land, we are told that they have two plots of land with, with equal areas. They have equal areas. So if the area happens to be, let's, let's call it equal area, let's call it A. So what happens to the first plot? In the first plot, we are dividing this land into 16 equal parts. So this N that we see here is whatever the total area is, is being divided into 16 equal parts. The second second plot, which is of the same area, which means it's also A, but is divided into 20 area, 20 pieces, 20 divided into 20 parcels. So since the since the numerator is the same, it's the same amount of land, is the same amount of land, but here we're dividing into only 16 pieces, here we're dividing into 20 parts. So obviously the more parts we divide into, the smaller the size of each part because the bottom is bigger here. Therefore, A over 20 is going to be less than A over 16. Now, if you don't like what we just did here, if it makes it easier for you to see, if it makes it easier for you to see this problem in a concrete terms, in, in concrete term, uh, think of some numbers, some number that you know you can divide easily by 16 and 20. Any number, any number that you can divide by 16 and 20 would do the job. For example, we can pretend that A is 80. We can pretend that A is 80. So we have 80 acres, 80 acres divided by 16, and here we have 80 acres divided by 20. 
Of course, 8 acres divided by 20 is going to give us 4, whereas over here we're going to get 5. And of course, so here each, each subdivision will be of 5 acres each, and here each of them would be 4 acres. Each, will, each of them will have 4 acres. The answer, of course, is in both cases, obviously, the answer is going to be A. The answer is A. Number 4. Question number 4. Question number 4. In question number four, we are told that we have variable, this is 80%. We are told that we have variable x, which, mean, which we are told is more than one. That's all we are told, that's all that is there. And we're being asked to compare in column A, we have a quantity x minus four, and in column B, we have a quantity of negative two. x minus, x minus four versus negative two. I'll give you five seconds. To pause and unpause the video, do it yourself. I'm going to erase the bottom part so that you don't get confused. This is from the previous problem. Here is it. This is it. This is the entire. This is the problem as it appeared in, in the exam in its entirety. X is more than one. Compare x minus four versus negative two. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself first. Well, here we go. The simplest thing would be. The simplest thing to, uh, to, 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 do, to have here would be to separate the variable by itself. Have it, have it have the x by itself so that we don't have to worry about the complication of negative 4. How do we do that? It's very simple. Add 4 to both columns. Add 4 to both columns and now the 4 disappears and we're comparing x versus 2. And what do we know about x? x we are told is more than 1 and that is all we know. All we know is that x whatever it is is more than 1. Well, is that enough for, a, for us to figure out which quantity is bigger? Oh, well, we don't know. X could be 2. If X happens to be 2, then 2 is equal to 2. The answer would be C. Or X could be 2, 2 million. If X happens to be 2 million, then 2 million versus 2, the answer would be A. We do not know. The answer is A. answer is D. All we know is that X is more than 1. Well, how does X compare with 2? X could, X could be 2, or X could be 2 million, or X could be 2 billion. Who knows? It's not enough. Number five. Question number five. Question number five, when it appeared in the exam, 81% of people had no trouble with it. 81% of the people had no trouble with it. We have a rectangular region, we are told. We have a rectangular region. R we are told has width 8 and perimeter 40. And what we are being asked to compare, what we are being asked to compare in column A, we have the area, the area of the rectangular, uh, rectangular region R versus Column B, we have 256, 256. Let's see what we can do here. One more time, question number five. We have a rectangular region R. We are told rectangular region R has a width of eight and a perimeter of 40. Compare the area of the region versus 256. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do the problem yourself first and then compare the work that you have done yourself with the work that we are about to do in a few seconds, okay? Well, let's see what we can do. We have a rectangle here. What do we know about this rectangle? Well, we know that it has a width of 8, so let's put down the width of 8. But we don't know the length. We do not know the length. But we do know that the perimeter is 40. Perimeter is 40, which means this length plus this length so there's, there's 2 times L, but not, yeah, two, 2 times L plus 8 and 8 plus 2 times 8, that's the perimeter, isn't it? And that perimeter we are told is 40. That's 40. Let's divide the entire, let's divide the entire equation by 2, so we end up with L plus 8 equals 20. 
Well, if L plus 8 equals 20, then L must be 12. L must be 12. I left no room at all to put anything here. I'm going to have to squeeze it in there. That's it, L equals 12. So the area of this guy, area of this guy is 12, which is the length here, times the width, which is 8. 12 times 8 versus 256. And of course, 12 times 8 has to be less than 256. 12 times 8 has to be less than 256. How do we know that? Because 12 times 10, even if it were, even if it were 12 times 10, 12 times 10 would have been 120, and 120 is nowhere close to 256. Therefore, 12 times 10 is even less than 120. What it is really, it really doesn't interest us. We're not going to sit here and compute it. This, these are not called quantitative computation. We simply have to compare them. Do you understand? I'll, I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.